All right. Uh, I want everybody to go take your Bibles here this morning and turn to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 16. And going to read verses 17 and 18 here this morning. Romans chapter number 16, uh, and verses 17 and 18. When you find a place, we'll stand to your feet and show honor and respect to the Word of God here this morning. Romans chapter number 16, verses 17 and 18. Romans chapter number 16, and we're going to read verses 17 and 18 here this morning. The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. We read those two verses again. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I want to bring a message entitled here this morning, Separation from Doctrinal Apostates. Separation from Doctrinal Apostates. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be able to be here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all the folks that are here. God, I thank you, Lord God, for the children's choir. God, I thank you for, uh, Lord, how they're growing and learning there in children's church and, and getting the, the, the basics or getting uh, a good foundation in the Bible, Lord, and learning your word. And I thank you for that. And God, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here at Glory Bound Baptist Church. God, I thank you, Lord, what you're doing in our hearts and our lives. God, I just want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us in so many ways. God, I thank you, Lord, for the good singing and the fellowship that we've had here this morning. But, Lord, now it's preaching time. So, God, I ask you to fill me up with the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you give me power and wisdom, clarity of mind and clarity of speech. God, and I pray this message will be a help to us here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody can be seated. Let me read those two verses again. All right, then we'll get right into the message here this morning. Romans chapter number 16, verses 17 and 18. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren... Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And I said that the title of the message here this morning is Separation from Doctrinal Apostates. Now you say, preacher, what exactly does that mean? What does it mean when you say separation from doctrinal apostates? Well, I believe that the Word of God teaches us to be a separated people. Amen? Yeah. The Bible says that uh, those of us that are saved, those of us uh, that have trusted in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has called us out from the world to come out from among them and be a peculiar people, be a different people. The Bible teaches separation, amen? Yep. And that's not something that you hear preached a lot nowadays because a lot of churches, they want to be all-inclusive. They want, they want everybody to be welcome. They want everybody to be comfortable. And let me say this here this morning. Everybody is welcome at Glory Bound Baptist Church. But I can't guarantee that everybody's going to be comfortable, amen? On, amen? Amen? Because this Bible, amen, it cuts. Amen? On, the amen. truth hurts sometimes. But it's what we need to hear, amen? Truth will always be truth. And truth will always be right, whether you agree with it or not, amen? amen. So everybody is welcome here, but not everybody may be comfortable here. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense here this morning? Amen. But the reason why we don't hear Bible, I hear good biblical uh, doctrine preached about separation is because churches nowadays, they don't want to step on anybody's toes. They don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. They just want ever. Why can't we all just get along? And by saying that and living that way, they water down the message. They water down the Bible. They change biblical doctrine to fit everybody's needs and wants. Come Amen. On, preach. I heard this a long time ago and it has stuck with me. You do not conform the Bible to fit your lifestyle. Amen. Amen. You conform your lifestyle to fit the Word of God. Amen. 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 Hey, I, I heard this too a long time ago. You know the reason why that God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses in stone? It's because with stone, you either abide by it or you break it, amen? amen. There's no bending stone, amen? amen? There's no bending God's Word. You either abide by it or you break it, amen? amen? And what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as I'm the preacher here, I'm going to preach this book right. And if I step on your toes, so be it. But what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong, amen? amen. amen. Separation from 
doctrinal apostates. So what does that mean? What is doctrine? Well, the definition for doctrine is a set of beliefs held and taught by the church. Where do we get our doctrine from? We get our doctrine from this King James Bible. Amen. Amen. If it's not in this King James Bible, we're not going to preach it. We're not going to teach it. But if it's in this King James Bible, Bible right here, you better believe we're going to hold to it. Amen. Amen. We're going to preach it. We're going to stand upon it whether you like it or not. Amen. Like it Amen. or lump it, it's truth. And that's what we're going by. So what is doctrine? It's a set of beliefs held and taught by the church. Where do we get our doctrine from? From the King James Bible. Now it says separation from doctrinal apostates. What is an apostate? An apostate is someone that, uh, uh, is, that abandons a religious belief. Those who abandon the teachings of the King James Bible are doctrinal apostates. Those who abandon the teachings of the King James Bible. The title is separation from doctrinal apostates. Does the Bible teach that we should separate ourselves from doctrinal apostates? You know, some people would say, well, you know, preacher, uh, you know, even though they teach this and it's a little bit different than what oh. we believe, you know, preacher, you know, they got a good heart. They mean well, but, you know, they're, they're a little off on this, but they got this over here right, but they're just wrong on this over here. Well, you know, we should all just get along. But what does the Bible say? And what does the Bible teach? Does the Bible teach that we should separate ourselves from doctrinal apostates? Let's examine the Scriptures and see what thus saith the Word of God. Amen? I'm not concerned. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I am not concerned about what man has to say, but I want to know what thus saith the Word of God. Amen? What does the Bible have to say right. on this issue? <laughs> who, would be considered, uh, who, would, who would be considered to be a doctrinal apostate? Someone who rejects the clear, sound teachings of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? That would be a doctrinal apostate. Someone who rejects the clear, sound teachings of God's Word. There are three types of doctrinal apostates that I want to talk about here this morning. Number one, those who have heard and rejected the Gospel. Amen? No. Those who have heard and rejected the Gospel. They've heard the Gospel message. They've heard that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. They've heard about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they know that the Gospel is the only way. They've heard the Gospel. They have a head knowledge, but they don't have a heart knowledge. And they reject to accept the Gospel. They're a doctrinal apostate. They've heard the truth, but they reject God's Word. So number one, those who have heard and rejected the Gospel. Number two, those that follow after false gods and vain religion. Amen? Come on. And number three, those that claim to be Christian, but their teachings do not mirror the Bible. We as Christians, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a mirror image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When people look at us and they examine our lives and they look and, 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 and examine our actions and our reactions, our actions and our reactions, the way we live our lives, or to be a mirror image of Jesus Christ. It ought to reflect the Word of God. Amen. People ought to be able, you know, I heard, I've heard this all my life too. You may be the only Bible that somebody may read. That's right. People read our lives. That's right. Amen. Amen. Is your life a mirror image of this Word? Is your life a mirror image of the Word of God? When people look at you, can they tell that you're a Christian? Or do you live a different way? Does your life not line up with the Word of God? So there are three types of doctrinal apostates. One, those who have heard and rejected the Gospel. Two, those that follow after false gods and vain religion. And number three, those that claim to be Christian, but their teachings do not mirror the Bible. What do we do when it comes to these people? What do we do as Christians? As Bible-believing Christians, what do we do when it comes to these people? Do we separate ourselves from them? And have no fellowship with them? Or do we bring them in with us? Do we bring them in close to us and try to fix them? What do we do? Well, what does the Bible say about it? Number one. Number one here this morning. The Bible teaches us, number one, to identify them. Look at Romans chapter 16, verse 17 again. It says, Now I beseech you, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. That's the Bible teaching. Which ye have learned and avoid them. So it says there, number one, it says to mark them. So we're supposed to identify them. Look at Philippians. If you will, turn to the book of Philippians. Uh, Philippians uh, chapter number 3, verses 17 and 18. Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Brethren, be followers together of me 
and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example, or for an example. Verse 18, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now, t and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. According to the Word of God, we're to mark them. We're to identify them. Amen? Amen. So those that are doctrinal apostates, those that reject the clear teachings of this King James Bible, we're to mark them. We're to identify them. So I want to give you some examples of some doctrinal apostates here this morning. I wrote down five examples here. Number one, the charismatic movement. Those out there that teach that you can lose your salvation. Those out there that teach that you have to speak in tongues. Those that believe in these faith healings. They, uh, these people out You know what? They, 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 they do not hold to sound doctrine. Amen? They do not hold to sound doctrine. And we're going to go through all this here in just a little bit. But I'm just identifying them right now. Okay? I'm going to tell you, give you some more information in a little bit. But we're just identifying them right now. Come on. So here's some examples of some doctrinal apostates. Those that are involved in the charismatic movement. The Catholic Church. Islam. Now I'm going to name two names. Joel Osteen and Rick Warren. These are some examples of some doctrinal apostates. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about when I say the charismatic movement? Amen? The Pentecostal churches. Church of God. Church of Christ. Those out there that teach you you can lose your salvation. Speaking in tongues. All these things. They do not rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God. A word that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about when I say the Catholic Church? Amen. We're going to go in depth here in a little bit. Talking about what these folks believe. Everybody knows about Islam. The, uh, the religion of Islam. How many of y'all know who Joel Osteen is? Okay. Alright. How many of y'all know who Rick Warren is? Joel Osteen and Rick Warren are considered to be America's pastors. I'm telling you right now, they're doctrinal apostates. They do not they do not hold true to the Word of God. They don't right. preach this King James Bible. Right. They preach false doctrine. And they're leading people astray. And they're leading people to hell. And they are doctrinal apostates. Right. Amen. Right. The Bible tells us to mark them. You say, preacher, you shouldn't be naming names. Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible says mark them. Identify them. Amen. How else can I mark them? How else can I identify them? If I don't call out, call them by name, amen? Well, preacher, I just don't think you should name names. Didn't Jesus Christ name names? Didn't He call the Pharisees out? Didn't He call the Sadducees out? Hello, y'all with me this morning? Amen. Jesus named names. Bless God if Jesus Christ named names, I'm going to name names too. You know the reason why I, I, that the Bible tells us to mark them and to identify them and that it's okay for us to name names? Is because if I don't stand up here and tell you who to watch out for, you and I will fall victim to their false teachings. Amen. But if I stand up here and I tell you, hey, this person right here, they teach this wrong, they teach this false doctrine, and they teach this false doctrine, and they're leading people to hell, stay away from that person. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Amen. But if I leave it very vague, you know, this particular crowd over here, and this particular, you don't know who I'm talking about. Everybody with me? Amen. The Bible says, mark them, identify them, call them out by name. Amen? The world needs to know who's false teachers out there, who's spreading false doctrine. It's all right to call names. Everybody with me here? I've heard, I've heard a lot of preachers say we should, that you shouldn't call names. The Bible says, mark them and identify them. So the examples that I'm going to use here this morning of doctrinal apostates, the charismatic movement, the Roman Catholic Church, Islam, Joel Osteen, and Rick Warren. That's who I'm marking. That's who I'm identifying here this morning. There's so many others that can be marked and identified here this morning as doctrinal apostates. But these are the five that I'm going with here this morning so that you'll get out of here at a decent time. Okay? So the Bible says, number one, to identify them. All right? So after you identify, after you identify them, after you mark them, what do you do? Do you just mark them, identify them? Okay, that person's uh, preaching false doctrine. That person believes false doctrine. This person is pushing and teaching false doctrine. Is that? Do we stop right there? No. Number one, we identify them. Number two, we reprove them. We reprove them. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 11. I don't hear no pages turning. 
Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 11. I said the first thing you do is you identify them. Number two, you reprove them. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse 11. The Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So you say, Preacher, what does that mean to reprove them? Well, we identify them, we mark them, we identify them. Then the Bible says we reprove them. Well, what does it mean to reprove them? The word reprove means reprimand and censor. Everybody hear that this morning? Yeah, yeah. That word reprove means reprimand and censor. What does reprimand mean? It means to rebuke. What does rebuke mean? It means to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. Y'all hear that this morning? Amen. We're to reprove them. That means to reprimand and censor. Reprimand means to rebuke. Rebuke means to express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their belief or actions. We're to censor them. What does censor mean? To examine them and suppress the unacceptable parts. Everybody with me? That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to identify those that are teaching false doctrine, that are doctrinal apostates, and are leading people astray, and they're leading them the wrong way, and they're leading them straight to hell. We're to identify them, and then we're to reprove them. We're to rebuke them, reprimand them, and censor them. What's wrong with the charismatic movement? I'm going to tell you what's wrong with the charismatic movement. Many of them do not hold true to this King James Bible. Many of them believe that you can lose your salvation. I preached about that last Sunday. I don't think i got to re-preach that here this morning. Yeah. You cannot lose your salvation. Right. They teach a works-based salvation that you've got to do certain things in order to maintain your salvation. That's false. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul said, that if anybody preach another gospel, let it be accursed. Amen? That's another gospel. Because they're adding to the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. And they're adding to it. Therefore, they're teaching a false gospel. And the Bible says to let them be accursed. But not only that, they still push that you ought to speak in tongues. Well, when you rightly divide the word of truth, you know what the Bible talks about when it comes to speaking in tongues? Do you know who it was for? It was for the unbelieving Jew. Amen. I don't know about you. I'm not a Jew. I'm a Gentile. And I'm a believer. I'm a believing Gentile. Therefore, speaking in tongues was not for me. The Jew required a sign. Amen? Amen. The Jew required a sign. Speaking in tongues was a sign gift. Amen. I'm not a Jew. I'm a believing Gentile. Most of these charismatic churches, when you go into them, they're not Jews. They're a bunch of believers. I, 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 this, is, this baffles me. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a word beneath not be ashamed, rightly divided, the word of truth. How many of y'all have ever been in a charismatic church before? How many of y'all have been in there and you've heard people start speaking in tongues in a charismatic church? Most of them that was jumping up speaking in tongues was women, wouldn't they? You know when you get over in that scripture where it talks about women keep silence? You know what that's talking about, right? It was pertaining to speaking in tongues. All these charismatic churches, if they were doing it by the Bible, if they were doing it by the Bible, number one, there wouldn't be no women speaking up, uh, standing up speaking in tongues. And the Bible also said that it ought, it ought to be done by courts. Amen? It ought to be done by courts. They just jump on the whole congregation. Shum up, shum up, shum up, shum up, shum up, shum up, shum up. That's not by course. That's not one at a time. It says by two or three. And then it says, let there be an interpreter. Every charismatic church service I've ever been in, people jump up and start rattling off in tongues. There ain't nobody there interpreting what they're saying. Right. It's not by the Bible. It's not biblical. But then the Bible also goes on to say, study to show thyself approved unto God. The word beneath not be saying, rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible talks about when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Amen. Bless God. We've got the perfect work of grace. Amen. Amen. Grace is perfect. Amen. 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 Hey, I'm sound, saved by grace. I don't need to speak in tongues. I don't need a sign. Amen. I've got the perfect work of grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm saved by faith through grace. Amen. Amen. By grace alone, through faith alone. In Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Amen. They teach and preach all kinds of stuff. You know what they do? They go to Acts chapter 2. And they preach Acts chapter number 2. They don't realize that the book of Acts is a history book. It's a transitional book. It teaches salvation plus water baptism at the beginning of Acts because they were dealing with the Jews. 
But when you get halfway through the book of Acts, there's Paul with the, the dispensation of grace preaching you're saved by grace through faith. That's it. Hello? Amen. They teach wrong doctrine. Why? Because they don't study all 66 books. They read one book and they stick to that and that's it. They read one chapter and they stick to that. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A work that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. Amen? Charismatic movement, they're leading people astray. And it's my job as your preacher to point out to you what they're preaching is wrong. Amen? Amen. Amen. I believe many of them have sincere hearts. But sincerity is not what gets you to heaven. Amen. Amen. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's That's a right. lot of sincere people burning in hell right now. Amen. Sincerity doesn't get you to heaven. The Catholic Church. What's wrong with the Catholic Church? Everything. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The only way to get to God the Father is through Jesus Christ the Son. Amen? Amen. Then why did they push praying to Mary? You realize Mary is a sinner just like us? Amen. Thank God she was a virtuous woman. Thank God that she was, that was a virgin on earth. Amen? If Jesus Christ was to be born today, I don't know if God could find a virgin on this earth. But thank God there was a virgin then. Amen. Thank God she was a good woman. But she was a sinner just like us. She needed a Savior just like us. Amen? If Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, then why did they push confession? Why do I got to go and confess my sins to some dude in a closet? Well, first off, that just don't sound right to me. I am not going by myself and getting inside a dark closet with another man. Especially when that man's wearing a dress. Hello? Amen. I ain't happening, Jack. I ain't climbing up no closet, dark closet, with some man wearing a dress and tell him all my dirty little secrets. Mm -hmm. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Doesn't the, uh, the, uh, the, the Ten Commandments, we're not supposed to have any other gods before us, right? But yet they've got all these statues that they pray to. Right. And all these saints and mothers and all these things that they bow down to and worship and cross themselves. They teach uh, uh, that the Holy Sacraments is what gets you to heaven. I, well, why did Jesus die on the cross? Why did He shed His blood on Calvary? If I can just go and confess my sins to some, some dude in the closet? Why would I want to do that when I know that my brother's going to pray me out of hell and into heaven once I die? Well, I better go to confession. <laughs> There's all, you find none of that in the Bible. Yeah, we're to pray for one another. Amen? We ought to confess our faults one another so we can help each other. But nowhere in the Bible does it tell me to go climb up in the closet with some dude wearing a dress and tell him all the mistakes that I made and then for him to tell me, well, go say 20 Hail Marys and all fathers and your, your, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> the charismatic movement, doctrinal apostates. Catholicism, doctrinal apostates. I've been to Catholic church services before. They don't even open up a Bible. How can they teach biblical doctrine if they don't even open up a Bible? And many of them, when they do read Scripture, they read it in Latin. I can barely speak English. Anybody here speak Latin? You speak Latin? You do? Oh, hallelujah, brother. <laughs> Tell me what the priest is saying at the Catholic Church. None of the rest of us here speak Latin. I can't even speak good English. Amen? Charismatic movement, doctrinal apostates. Catholicism, doctrinal apostates. Islam. Islam, doctrinal apostates. They want to, that, their, their, their holy book, so-called holy book, says to kill the people of the book. Do you know who they're talking about? Killing Christians, those of us that read this Bible, they're doctrinal apostates. You know what, Islam, I can't stand it when these, these politicians, they want to get up and they want to say, well, you know, we all, we all worship the same God and, and, you know, we just call them by different names, but it's the same God. I'm sorry. Yeah, religion of peace. I didn't know cutting the heads off of people was peaceful. If that was the case, I, I ain't going to say that because somebody will take this and take it the wrong way and say, preacher Mike's promoting violence. 
They say it's a religion of peace, yet they cut people's heads off. Nowhere in this Bible has God told me, the God of this Bible, Amen. ever told me to go round up people that don't believe in Him and chop their heads off. Amen. But yet, according to the politicians, oh, it's all the same God. We all serve the same God. It's, it's just by a different name. Well, then why in their book is their so-called God telling them to cut our heads off? But our God in this Bible is telling us to love them Pray for them and share the gospel with them. They're not the same God. Everybody with me? They're a false God. Hey, I don't understand these preachers, and I'm going to be getting to one of them here in just a second. I don't understand these preachers that want to mix religions. Amen? Hey, this is a Christian church. Amen? Yeah. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and I don't believe in any other God. Amen? Amen. I believe in the, the God of this Bible. Amen? I'm not going to accept the other teachings of different religions. Amen? Amen. Islam is not welcome here in this church. Amen. Now those that follow Islam, they're welcome to come and hear the truth. And the truth will set them free. Amen? Amen. But I'm not changing the doctrines that this church stands on. I'm not changing the Word of God just so that we can be all inclusive. Everybody Amen. with me this morning? Amen. 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 We mark them, we identify them, and we reprove them. So what's wrong with the charismatic movement? Everything. What's wrong with Catholicism? Everything. What's wrong with Islam? Everything. I mentioned Joel Osteen. How many of y'all have ever heard Joel Osteen speak? Has anybody ever heard him preach about hell? Nobody. He'll have... 20 to 40,000 people, I guess, in his congregation on Sunday mornings. You know what? I would probably have a heart attack if I ever got the opportunity to preach to a crowd of 20,000. <laughs> but I guarantee if the Lord ever gave me the opportunity to preach to a crowd of 20,000, you better believe I'm going to preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection right. of Jesus Christ. Right. And anything outside of that is going to bust their wide open. Amen? Right. That's what they need to hear. Hey, I would love... I wish Joel Osteen would call me up and say, Hey, Brother Mike... Come down here, I'm going to let you preach one Sunday morning. Yes, sir. I'll be there. I'll go preach. He gets up there and he tells a lot of stories. He starts off with some jokes. Man, never. I will give him this. Man, never frowns. I think he puts hooks in his lips and ties strings around him around his ears so he smiles in his sleep. Because his face is just stubborn. He's just smiling all the time. And he tells them, he'll start off with a few little jokes and get the crowd to chuckle a little bit and then he'll tell them some little self-help things to make them feel good. How they can be a better person and, and live a better life and, and be pleased and be happy with everything. The only problem with that is is that life is not all sunshine and rainbows because there's sin in this world and sin leads people to hell. I guarantee you he'd lose that smile when he realized that he sent his congregation to hell, that they wouldn't hear the truth. And they wouldn't hear about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you that smile would be turned upside down if he could open up the floor and let him look down in the hell and see all those that were members of his church burning for all eternity because he didn't preach the truth. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen? He's a doctoral apostate. He had the opportunity on national television I think it was with, with Wolf Blitzer, I think it was. Larry King? He's with Larry King. Had the opportunity. Larry King asked him, in so many words, how can somebody go to heaven? Now, if Larry King asked me that, I'm going to tell you, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Amen. There's one way through the Lord Jesus Christ. His death is burial and resurrection. I'd lead him down the Romans road tell him that he could be saved if he put his faith and his trust in Jesus. If not, he's going to heaven. That's how you go to heaven. Joel Osteen was asked that. You know what Joel Osteen said? Now, he's supposed to be one of America's pastors. Well, Barry King, uh, Mr. King, uh, well, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He asked him, Larry King phrased it like three or four different ways asking the same question. And every time, 
Joel Osteen said, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Would you have confidence in me if somebody come up to me and ask me how they could go to heaven and I said, I don't know. Would you want me to be your pastor? No. No. I'd take myself out back and beat myself within an inch of my life. If I couldn't tell somebody how they could go to heaven, supposed to be America, one of America's pastors. Can't even tell, some, tell, tell somebody on... He had an opportunity on national television to millions to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And all he could say was, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Doctrinal apostate. Amen? Right. We mark them, we identify them, and then we reprove them. Hey, I will, I'm going to go as far as to say this. I believe Joel Osteen is lost on his way to hell. And he needs Amen. to accept the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved. Amen? If he can't tell somebody how they can go to heaven, then he must not know it for himself. Amen. That's right. Identify them and reprove them. What's wrong with the charismatic movement? Everything. What's wrong with, the, with Catholicism? Everything. What's wrong with Islam? Everything. What's wrong with Joel Osteen? He's lost. Amen. And then I mentioned Rick Ward. Rick Ward. He has been called America's pastor. Now I'm talking about separation from doctrinal apostates. You know what Rick Warren put in one of his books? Stay away from doctrine. You know what that's what he's basically saying? Don't read and study your Bible. Yeah. You know what Rick Warren has headed up? He's headed up this thing called Chrislam. Do you know what Chrislam is? It's the merging of Christianity with Islam. He says he's a preacher. He says he's a minister of the gospel. But yet he wants to mix Christianity with Islam. Hey, that's like mixing oil and water. They ain't going to mix. Amen. If you preach pure Christianity, it's not going to mix with Islam. None. It's going to clash with Islam. Anybody that thinks that they can blend those two religions and find common ground is done. Lost their mind. That's right. Amen. You're right. They're crazy. Amen. You're right. You know the reason why he thinks that he can do that? Because he ain't read and studied this Bible. He's teaching people to stay away from doctrine. He's leading people to hell, by the way. So the Bible tells us to identify them, then we're to reprove them, and lastly here this morning, the Bible teaches us to separate ourselves from them. Stay away from them. Does it really, preacher? Absolutely. Look at Romans chapter number 16 again. Romans chapter number 16, look at verses 17 and 18 again. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. You see that? And avoid them. What does that mean? Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Mark them, reprove them, avoid them. Amen. Amen. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Verse, uh, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. You see that? They claim that they've got God. They've got a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. God says that crowd stay away from them. Amen? Amen. Oh, well, you know, they're a religion. They believe in God. and They talk about God all the time. And, and, but, but guess what? It doesn't line up with the Word of God. They might have a form of godliness, but they're not preaching and teaching the right doctrine. Stay away from them. Amen? Yes. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 again. Ephesians 5, 11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Have no fellowship with them. What does that mean? You don't hang out with them. You don't go out to lunch with them. You don't do anything with them. Amen? You identify them. You reprove them. And if they don't turn from their wicked ways... And you have no fellowship with him. Amen? Amen? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 
verses 14 through 16. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what, uh, or what part hath, uh, hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Those that preach and teach anything contrary to this King James Bible right here, anybody that teaches and preaches anything, preaches anything contrary to the doctrine that we hold true, that we get from this King James Bible, identify them, reprove them, and if they don't repent and get saved, then you stay away from them. You say, preacher, that's kind of harsh. We're supposed to love everybody. That is love. That is love. You say, preacher, how's that love? Well, if we don't identify them and reprove them we'll be like, and stay away from them, they might not know. they'll never know the truth. Amen? They'll never know the truth. And they'll feel like, well, everything's okay. I get... I, I'm accepted in that church just like everybody else is accepted in that church. And, and the preacher never says anything that steps on my toes. So, you know, I must be right. I must be doing something right. By doing that. But these other churches out here that are doing, that water down their messages not to offend anybody, they don't realize what they're doing. They may be building up their numbers in their church. They may be building up the dollar signs in their church. But they don't realize that they're sending people straight to hell. No. Amen? No. I believe in tough love. Amen? My daddy showed me tough love growing up. Amen? I did wrong. My daddy beat me back in line. Amen? Guess what? I have fellowship with my dad. And I'm a better person for it. My dad had to beat me back in line. I ain't going to tell him where I'd be today. You know, tough love is necessary. Amen? Sometimes you just gotta, you got to do what you got to do. Amen? Lord Jesus Christ said, identify them, correct them, reprove them, and if they don't repent, if they don't accept the Word of God, then you stay away. Amen. Amen? Does that make sense here? Amen. You know the reason why the Lord tells us to stay away from them? I think somebody was right on the lines of saying it out here just a little bit ago. You know the reason why the Lord tells us to separate ourselves from them? Well, preacher, I hang around them, I hang out with them because I'm hoping that I'll be able to convince them that, uh, that what they believe is wrong. You know what's going to happen? Nine times out of ten what happens is, is you get discouraged because you can't win them over and you can't convince them that they're wrong. And you get discouraged. And when you get discouraged, then you start getting cold on God. And when you start getting cold on God, then you find yourself out into the world. When you find yourself out in the world, then you're no help to nobody. Amen? Amen. It's better to identify them, reprove them, and then step back and let God do the work in their lives. Amen? Amen. And we're limited. There's only so much that we can do. I would love to be able to go to every charismatic and take, take the Scripture and show them what thus said the Word of God. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this here, it says it here, and it says it here. What you've been teaching is wrong. This is what the Bible says. I wish I could do that. And I wish every one of them would say, the Bible is right. I've been wrong. Lord, I'm sorry. From now on, I'm going to do right. But that ain't the case. Every charismatic, every charismatic I've ever talked to about that, about those different things, eternal security, speaking in tongues, faith healing. Every one of them, in one ear and out the other. I wish I could go to every Roman Catholic and tell them what they're doing, what they're teaching, and what they're saying is wrong. But they're not going to listen to me. they got their minds made up. Everybody with me? Yeah. I'd like to go to every Muslim and tell them, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. But I like my neck. Amen. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I like this one on the floor. Okay. I tell them the truth, and then I leave it in God's hands. Amen. Because in their hands is a sword. Same thing with Joel Osteen. I wish I could see Joel Osteen have a conversation with him, but I'm not going to hang out with him until he gets it right. Amen. I'd like to be able to go meet Rick Warren face to face. Tell him what thus saith the Word of God. But I'm not going to hang out with him until he gets it right. Amen. Amen. Doctrinal apostates. We're to identify them. 
We're to reprove them. Now listen to me. Don't just identify them and call them out by name and then don't reprove them. Y'all with me? Amen. Don't be saying, so-and-so teaches wrong. Well, why do they teach wrong? So-and-so is leading people to hell. Why are they leading them to hell? Can you tell them why? Y'all with me? Because anything outside of reproving them is just gossip. Amen. Amen. Mark them, identify them, reprove them, and then leave it in God's hands. Have no fellowship with them. Stay away from them. That's what the Bible says. That's what we're to do. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to pray and we'll be dismissed. <coughs> Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for all the folks that are here this morning. God, I pray that you help each and every one of us to be the example that you'd have us to be. Help us, Lord God, to stand on good, sound, firm, biblical doctrine. Help us, Lord God, to, to live right in these last days, to set the example, to be a witness, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to call out sin. Help us, Lord God, to tell people what they can do to be forgiven of their sin. Lord, I pray that you touch and you bless every person here today. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Alright, now tonight, I want to encourage everybody to come back tonight. Service is 6 o'clock. I preached on I preached on separation of doctrinal apostates. Okay, those that reject the Word of God. Tonight, I'm going to preach on separation, but I'm going to preach on separation from disobedient saints. Those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that believe correctly, but they've fallen away. What do we do when it comes to that crowd? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I want to encourage everybody to come back tonight. Uh, for that, for the sermon tonight, six o'clock. God bless y'all. We're dismissed.